For more on the reversal in the nat gas market and whether further declines are ahead, let's bring in Bill Perkins with Skylar Capital Management CEO and head trader. Bill, it's good to see you today. What's behind the decline? Well, I think basically global macro, uh, you have the Fed basically dropping the hammer on assets. And uh, if you're going to slow down industry, if you're going to slow down the, the, the economy, you're going to have less energy consumption. We had a very tight market. Uh, supply was growing. There was concerns, would we have enough in storage for the winter? And those concerns have eased a bit, and that led to a, a, a sell-off. Okay, so if average monthly production this year has exceeded all other years, how is demand matching up with that? I mean, are we going to see lower prices here in the United States? Normally, we, we use the natural gas that we produce. Are we going to see that lead to lower heating bills? You, you would think so, except we also export a lot of gas to our neighbors in Europe who need it. There's a, there's a uh, supply disruption due to a little thing called the Ukrainian war going on right now. And so that is where we see a commensurate export increase with our increase in supply. So we're kind of tightly balanced, and any kind of upsetting of the apple cart one way or the other will lead to wild price swings. So we were pretty high in prices, and then we saw that demand was starting to back off. And prices have come much, much further down to earth. And, we're heading and, into the winter. Yeah, go uh, ahead. I was going to say, we're heading into the winter, so you have to be careful. Uh, the, the mean and the median, they're wildly divergent. That means that the average price is very high, but the favored price is lower. So we have to, we have to price in the case where we have a cold winter and prices go to $50. We are really getting into the height of the Atlantic hurricane season. We've started to see a lot more activity, keeping an eye on Ian heading toward Florida. Give me a sense of how that might influence natural gas and what we're seeing with uh, the, the price declines. In the old days, a hurricane was a bullish event because it would knock off more supply than demand it killed. Nowadays, a hurricane in the Gulf is a decidedly bearish impact. It destroys demand. We have power out, power outages, and we also stop the exporting of LNG. Mm. So if we had it further in the Gulf, it'd be very bearish. Right now, it's mildly bearish by, by knocking off some of the Florida demand for some period of time and cooling down the temperatures. So you know, things have changed in the last 10, 10 years. So any type of hurricane in the Gulf is bearish U.S. generally and bullish Europe. I'm going to ask maybe a naive question here, Bill. If I'm a consumer in the United States or Europe and I would like to see prices come down so that I'm not walloped when my heating bills come out this winter or my, my driving charges go, go down, should I be rooting for a recession that would take some demand out of the equation? <laughs> I think it depends on what, how stable your job is in that recession. I mean, yeah. it, it's kind of hard to uh, root for economic pain. But uh, what you really should be rooting for is investment in supply and growth of supply for stable prices. A recession would be nice in the short term, but who are you going to go on vacation with when your neighbors are out of work? But, 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 so. but, but, but <laughs> obviously increasing supply is going to run up against, uh, at least domestically and potentially globally, against those who oppose the idea of expanding the use of fossil fuels. Yeah, it's it's a great time to be a trader, maybe not such a great time to be a consumer because you have so much opposition to anything that increases the stability of prices, mainly more supply. 